Hi folks, it's Andy. Welcome to this episode of Kendo Video Feedback. Okay, it's been a few weeks since we've done one of these episodes. I've been away, I've been at the European Championships, I've been traveling around, I've been doing all sorts. It never stops in the world of Kendall Star. But we're back. We're back for this great new episode. This is a bit of a bumper episode, all right? Because I've got a few videos that have sort of built up whilst I've been off <laughs> from doing them. All right, so we're going to get through quite a lot today. I think there's four submissions that we're going through today. Four. All right, so it's going to be a bit of a quick fire as well. All right, so I won't take too much time on the intro. But basically, if you've seen this before, you'll already know, but I'm going to say it in case it's the first time you've seen it. First off, this is the kind of video where you wonderful viewers send me some footage. We watch it together. I give you some feedback. Everybody benefits with a bit of luck. I don't want any dodgy comments, mean comments, anything like that down there. They'll just get deleted, so don't even bother. Um, and shop at Kendall Star. Like, share, subscribe first. Just supposed to say that first. Like, share, subscribe, help people start Kendall. You can help at least another 1,057 people start Kendall by doing that. I uh, see other videos to find out how that works. And then <laughs> shop at Kendall Star, best Kendall equipment website in the entire known universe. I would say that's own the place. But it's super awesome. Best quality gear, best service. It's like free shipping, orders over a certain amount. We pay all the import taxes for most places too. You're going to shop with us anyway. So what's going to happen is, you know, you're either going to come to us in the first place. That's what most people do. Or you're going to go somewhere else. You're going to go to one of these pretenders, one of these one-man band type people are doing it out of their, their garage or their, their bedrooms or whatever. Or one of these other sort of places. And you're going to be dissatisfied. You're going to spend your money and then you're going to come and spend it with us in the end anyway. So you're going to end up buying twice. Now, if you don't want to buy twice... Shop at Kendo Star. First time. Okay. <laughs> okay, right. First one. So, a little bit of context. Um, it says, uh, I'd be grateful if you give me some feedback. Um, I'm aiming for showdown at the end of the year. I think this is an IQ test. Um, I was using the Kendo Star All Purpose Shinai and called it in the clips. Good job. Um, your Zero to Shodan series has been immensely helpful to me as I started my journey in Kendo. I can't thank you enough for sharing your expertise and guidance. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, it's from Thailand. Um, yeah, Zero to Shodan series. Um, it's been helping a lot of people. Um, I've got a new project on the way, Zero to Sandan, by the way, that's coming. And another new project that's uh, starting work in a couple of weeks um, where on one of the Kendo rant videos that I do on Fridays, someone asked me about starting Kendo uh, without a sensei. Um, I gave a bit of an unusual answer. And now... I'm going over to America to help them out. There'll be more details and context about that very soon. Right, let's get into this video. So you're on the left-hand side, I think, is the, um, is what you said. I'll just double check that. Um, I'm on the left for both clips. Okay, so we're starting with um, the first one. So you're on this left side, okay. So this is a grading for EQ, okay? So let's have a look, let's have a look. Let me have another look at you. Song is good, your song is good, your day is good, like it. Okay, so you start with Kirikaishi. Good for Mikomi. Yeah, this is all fine, no problem. I want you to be a bit careful though. See when you come back here. It might be the camera angle, but it doesn't look like your feet are in the best position that they could be. Right, and here's another thing that I want you, I want you to practice. This isn't for your grading. You'll get through your grading no problem like doing it this way. But for the betterment of your own kendo in the future, I want you to avoid doing Tsugiyashi for the Kirikaishi showmen. okay? So this one here, 
You see how you've sort of gone... Let's have a look. This part here, how you've gone... One, two, three, this way. It's best not to do this way, all right? See how you've like stepped forward with your right and then you stepped up with your left and lifted the shinai and then leaped forward with your fumi coming as you've done your downswing. As I said, no problem for your grade and stuff like that. But for the better development of your kendo in the future when you're practicing your dojo, try instead, do the right left step in while you're still in kamae, okay? Step in in your kamae and then leave your left foot where it is, swing up and then do fumigomi. So you're not going one, two, three this way so that you're learning to make a strike from the kamae position without having to go this like one, two, three sort of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, you guys, is good though. Good kikenta no iti. No problem. No problem for IQ, no problem for Shodan. All right, you'll be fine for Shodan. Absolutely fine. Okay. That's the Jitsugi. Excellent. No problem. All good. Nice. Let's see, you're using a variety of water, which is good. Look, yeah. I mean, you've got no problem here, have you? All right. So, oh, you're doing super well. Let me just have a quick. I mean, I, I, I could give you advice, but it's kind of about, uh, beyond your level. You, you, you're sort of overperforming for EQ Shodan at the moment, which is great. Um, if anything, you try not to lift the shinai quite this high when you're doing the small strikes. You don't want to pull it back this way. Try to try to keep your, your right hand in front of your left one uh, as much as possible. But you know, it, it, it's fine. Absolutely fine. There's no way There's no way you're going to struggle with your EQ or Shodan. Uh, obviously you passed the EQ, but there's no problem you um, need to struggle with Shodan either. Get your Shodan out of the way and start working towards Nidan. And Nidan's not that far away from you either, in fairness. So you need a bit more practice, a bit more sharpening up, like I say, without doing this so much but um you know a few more wadla would be cool and like i said i'd really like to see you uh improve the way you do your own kirikaishi um uh, it will have a massive impact on your kendo kendo in general Okay, so when you're receiving Kirikaishi, what you want to try and do, it's difficult because everyone's different levels and stuff like that, but I want to see a bit more Aiki. This isn't something that's going to pass or fail you at this level, but you see how your movements are not synchronized with your opponent's movements. You, you, you're sort of, your feet are just sort of walking when the sort of Ayumi Ash should be kind of also a kind of Kikentai no Ichi that's synchronized with your opponent. That makes sense. Yeah, very good. Very good. So here's where here's where this comes into it when I'm talking about this kote strike, right? You can see how much you lift the shinai there for the kote strike. It doesn't need to be lifted back like that. Just pam, and you'd have you'd have hit it already. But because it was quite big, you sort of missed the chance slightly. A little, it, it's, we're talking above sort of a Kyushu down level or two, fair. All right, so look, you're doing ace. You're doing great. I, I don't want to give you too much to go off. I don't want to. I think I think you're on the right track. All right, let's keep doing what you're doing. You'll have absolutely no problem at all with Shodan. Um and uh, yeah, start working towards Nidan really. Um, so yeah, good job, fantastic. Thank you for. Uh, Supporting Kendall Star and uh, sending in your video. Well done. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so for this next one, uh, we've got a little bit of uh, context. It's another grading video. This one is for Nidan. Okay, this one's for Nidan. So the person that just watched before, uh, who just did the previous one, uh, this is a good one to look at for your sort of because you're you you know you you you've got no problem with Shodan looking at that. This will be a good chance for you to look at what a Nidan exam looks like. Um, 
So uh, I actually already did a feedback video uh, for you when you did your shutdown last year, um, and I told you uh, that you needed to improve your uh, forward movement with Fumikomi and Fumikiri, uh, stretch your arms forward more, and show a bit more variety of techniques. And it says you, you feel like you made some improvement. Um, you felt like this was a bit of a more rough exam than your shodan was, but you, you're really happy that you passed. Um, especially in point one and two, you feel like you made improvement. You tried a few quad men, as, as I'll be able to see, uh, but they failed, and only your men's strikes are sometimes good. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing my, th hearing my thoughts, um, and what should you move forward on for Sandan? Okay, right, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So, you are, um, if I've got this right, I'm pretty sure you're number 206, which is on the right-hand side. Um, okay, let's have a look. So, I think they start straight up with the, the first the Jitugi. You just watch that first minute. Okay, so here's what I'm saying, right? Here's what I want you to fix first off for, for Sandan, all right? And I won't jump in straight here with the criticisms, but, <laughs> right? I want you to watch your feet here, all right? See, when you want to make a men's strike, you've done what I said to the previous person in that you've done that sort of tsugiyashi with your, you sort of move forward and then you go duh, duh, and like that when you want to hit. You need to remove that, all right? It's quite a good chance for the men's strike, again, we talked as well in the previous one, didn't we, about swinging the shinai a bit too big. But what I really want to fix with you is this uh, footwork issue, okay? This footwork issue, right? One, see how you went like that? One, two, three, there you go. One, two, three, okay? I want you to make the step in first, and then from your kamae, hit, okay? Definitely for Sandan, that's something you need to look at. Okay, so for Kote, your Kote needs to be a bit more dynamic going forward. It was a good chance. But you see how, and this is really common at your level, all right? See how you you hit and the Shinai sort of stayed forward that way and then it's kind of got stuck on the other person. What you want to do with your Kote is after you hit, you want to, Kote in, in a way, you kind of hit and lift off in a split second, like, pam that way, like, pam like that. And then you hit and move the Kensen slightly to the left, your left. Okay, so it goes over their right shoulder, bam, that way. All right, so then you've got the space in case something messes up and you can strike again if necessary. And this sort of sort of jam up doesn't happen too much. Right, come on it. Let's try and fix that, your hips, you, you, this, this sort of S shape a little bit. I'm throwing a lot at you now, but you're going for Sandan, all right? You've done a real good job getting your knee down. Let's get you through Sandan. Your come is a little bit too much like this, all right? I want it to be more this way, all right? So straighten your left leg a little bit more. Great men's strike. Great men's strike. What you need to do next, you see how you did that same thing with your with your left uh, left foot? Can you see my mouse cursor on it? Yeah, okay. Well, you did the same thing with your left foot there. And then after hitting, you sort of lost control of your body weight, all right? So I want you to sharpen up your footwork a little bit so that you're able to uh, nice and freely move around the the, the area as you need to. But look, yeah, this is, this is need on every day of the week. There we go, that's a good chance for Kote Men. Very good. Okay. Now, what you when you do Kote at this point in response to your opponent's Kote, your men's strike has to be much smaller. All right? You have to use the momentum from your Kote strike here, and from there, you have to now drop onto the men. From here, okay, maximum. Even better from here, yeah? But from here at the maximum. You don't have time to bring it all the way back here, as you can see, because this happens, okay? So instead, next time here, Kote is good, and men from there. From there, bam, straight to men. Does that make sense? <laughs> No problem there. All good. Yeah, I can see a good variety of waza here, which is good too. 
I think the main thing for me is, is sorting out this footwork. See, you did, that wasn't bad. This is much better. This one's much better. You see how you sort of step in here, then you're in your Kamai position, and then you strike. This is what your strikes have to be the whole time. All right? Okay? Still need to do a bit more work off launching from the left, because what's happening here is your, your foot is landing quite obviously before your Shinai. Yeah? Um, which is why when you watch it at sort of full speed, it looks a little bit disjointed. It's not the end of the world, but to get through Sandman, you need to fix that, yeah? That's why it doesn't look as sort of explosive as it could. That makes sense. Okay, so I think we move around, skip forward. Okay, so move around, now you're doing Kirikaishi, okay? Cool, let's have a look at your kids. So, Sonkyo, your head needs to be over your hips, okay? So try not to lean forward head back okay a bit more like your your partner's got a good example there okay okay yeah fine Not quite reaching the target, are we, with these, especially that last one. So maybe think about your uh, distance a little bit more, but it's all right. Okay, last jitsuki. Okay, this is quite good. It's quite a good chance. Quite good. Yeah, nice men there. Could have done with being a little bit more... You know, snap to it. Okay, again, so same sort of thing with that Kote Men. So here, what your problem with your Kote Men was of is, right, is that you're not, again, it's a bit like I said before, you're not fully in control of your momentum and your body weight. So you sort of throw yourself into the, into the Kote and then you, you try and launch yourself into men, but your footwork's not backing up your kendo, so it's not carrying your body weight efficiently. So you kind of uh, fall into this sort of men strike. You see what I mean? So it looks sort of clumsy. So... You need, you know, if you fix your kamae a bit more and, 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 and focus on your footwork being a kind of stable foundation for, for the movements that you make, so that if you make kote men, it's bam, bam, and you don't end up falling into the men, you'll have much more success with it. You hear more a bit too long as well on your men. Okay, you need to cut those. That was a good one. That was a good one. Now, last thing I would say on that one, all right, is you see how your your sort of intention after hitting Kote Men is like this kind of going upwards. Yeah, I'm exaggerating. It's not that bad, but bam, bam, this way. It wants it bam, bam, this way, it's forward. You can, if you're watching full speed, it's a little bit more obvious. You see what I mean? Bam, bam, this sort of way. Better, right? <laughs> Your command looks better in this shot, all right? So, you, you you know, just be careful not to slip in the other way. Well, you did that step in with your left leg again, didn't you? See, I can see it. I can see it. This part, you see your left leg comes up there? You need to get rid of that, all right? Yeah. Definitely need to get rid of that for some time. Oh, that was a nice one. That was good. No problem. Look, this is knee down every day of the week. There's no problem with there. Um, but yeah, look, for Sandan, um, that was a nice man too. But for Sandan, first and foremost, I want rid of this footwork problem, okay? This step up there, all right? Let's get rid of that. Um, let's work on... Um, using your lower body to keep your upper body stable so that you, when you make renzoku aza, like kote men, you can keep stability and keep control of your uh, momentum after you strike and try not to go this way, but this way, okay? Um, but super, well done, uh, great job. Um, 
congratulations on passing Nidan and uh, keep up the good work for the next couple of years towards your Sandan. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so here we are for the next one. Um, this time we've got another um, repeat submission. Uh, I think we looked at one of your videos before. You said that I think it was in, back in episode five um, of this. So uh, great to have you uh, send in an update video. We're looking at a Shi'ai now, okay? So we've done with the gradings. We're looking at a Shi'ai now. Um, I've got um, a couple of... Um, bits of information about it. You're on the red, red uh, side of the match. We've got two two matches to look at. Um, <clears throat> let's see, uh, your, this is a team tournament. You went on to win first place. Fantastic, well done. That's absolutely amazing. Um, <clears throat> and you're 43 years old. Uh, your opponent, your first opponent's about yours and then your age. And then the second is about 15, is 15 years younger. Okay, fantastic. Right, let's have a look then. So red player. Good. I think you said as well, I think you said, sorry, I, I think you said you're about to test for fourth down this year. Okay, so we know where you're at as well in terms of what you're at. Okay, good. Good. Okay, so good here, right? This is really good attempt at men, good semi, good approach, everything like that. But I, I want you to be a bit careful of after hitting this sort of action, man, this sort of way, bam, this would be a bit more explosive. What you've done is, because you sort of this way, you're, if I were to look at this on the side, ever so slightly, your back would be curved away from your opponent, ever so slightly. It gives a good opponent room to do kaisuaz on you, all right? Whereas if, you're, if your posture is a bit better after striking, and as you make the strike, this way, it's going to be really hard. Your your um, momentum is going to be much more. It's going to be really hard for them to hit you back with some sort of kaisuaza. See, he, he, he tried. He, he tried to do the kaisuaza for against you actually, and he even almost had the room to do it. But yeah. Good. Yeah, see, see what I mean here? Part of this is coming from the way you're distributing your weight here, all right? Your left leg is a bit too bent here. Um, so when you want to launch, you see how your foot's pointed out to the side there too, right? So when you want to launch, this is the sort of shape that you end up making. As I say, a very good fast player, like an experienced Japanese player, for example, you're giving them all the space. Look at the space between you and your opponent. So th th there's plenty of room for them to do audio, whether it's kaishu waza or suriage waza or something like that. See what I mean? Your opponent's tried to do that as well, actually, but because he's made the action so big and, and swung the shinail up here, it's too late for him to really do it. Um, but someone that moves a bit sharper, pam, is, is really gonna find it easy to, to return the strikes at you. Okay? Good. Okay, that was good. That was very good. I, I like that. Okay. So what you've done here, you've given him, you've given him the impression that you're, you know, you're confident in your men's strikes. You've got a good semi here. You're taking the center. It looks like you're going to come for one of those men's strikes again. Brilliant. You got him to raise his hands. Pam dropped onto the court. Fantastic. Great. Well done. Well done. Nicely created. Ipon. Good, I like this. So, so that was good too. That was good too, right? You made the right choice in the Kote Gaisi Men. But the problem is, is the action was a little bit too big. I think you wasn't entirely sure which way it was coming, whether it was going to come at Kote or Men. So you sort of overdone the block. But then your return as well is a little bit too slow. If we just watch that again. There is the chance there, but you've got to be super fast with it. 
And because you're sort of this way as you're doing the, the block, you've then got to shift your momentum back forward for your strike. Whereas if it was forward in the first place, even if you block, pam, pam, you'd be able to make that a bit faster. And it would, it would probably have been a really successful weather. And even if it wasn't, it would have probably really affected the mindset of your opponent. So this was, again, you made a good attempt at that. But um, this was I here, this men's strike after. You made a good contact with it, but it's not really proper Kentai no Ichi, is it? Like the footwork and the hands are a little bit kind of janky. So it doesn't quite, you know, it doesn't quite get there. So, let me watch that again. I like this, Nida Moza. But again, I think in a higher level tournament, you're gonna to struggle to get Ippon with this technique, all right? It was fun, it was great choice of technique, very much so, okay? Kote didn't make it, and then you went for the men. But can you see how it doesn't have the Kentai no Ichi, okay? Your hands and feet are not synchronized at all. Um. You see how you sort of do a sort of Fumikomi afterwards? So, in, in a sort of higher level tournament, something like, I don't know, like like a European Championship, something like that, probably the flags aren't going to go up for that, even if you make contact with the men. Mm. It was a well seen, well seen opportunity though. Yeah, so just sharpen up the technique a little bit. Okay, so on the right side this time. Oh, very good, very good, very good, very good. I like that. Yeah, fine. Yeah, good. This is where you said there was quite a big age gap between you and your partner. This is how you have to play these matches. You can't sort of throw yourself at them. With, you know, too, with too much athleticism. <laughs> Those old guys don't necessarily uh, do so well at keeping up with that. So let me see that again. Okay, so this is a really dangerous point after hitting. So this is a really great Ippon from your partner, actually. Um, so, yeah, I think it's an often missed opportunity. Mm, often missed opportunity. Lots of people after hitting don't turn around like this. Um, so, yeah, uh, Jakubo is a, is a fantastic uh, choice of Waza there. What could you have done about that? I mean, what you could have done about that, right? The problem you got here is you made the door strike. It wasn't successful, you knew that, but unfortunately you sort of created the distance for him to make the Gyakudo, do you see that? So what you really wanted to do there next time is try not to, you see at this point, either keep going as fast as you can this way, right? Or, as you turn around here, you now need to move back into him. Not back. You see how you stepped out into perfect range for him. I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, he, he was going to do the Gyakudo anyway, right? He was going to do Gyakudo anyway. And he was just really lucky that you, you gave him the distance to do it. So if you'd, if you'd taken more distance here, or you'd closed the distance more, Probably you'd have prevented that. If that makes sense. Okay. When your opponent's got their hand up like this, don't hit him. <laughs> All right, it, it's not cool. Um, you're not going to get the bomb. If the opponent's got a hand up like this, and you even if something's open, you hit him. You ain't getting it on, all right? All you're gonna do is make the shinpan think like negatively of you, all right? So I know that's not you that sent the, that's a tip for your opponent if they're watching, okay? Okay, so this is, this is not it on, um, because first off, the opportunity is not really there like it was before, and it's it's kind of 
Really, he's just bashing at the door here. All right, this isn't a waza. This is this isn't a strike with Kenta no Ichi, uh and all the other prerequisites of a you called Atotsu. Um But still, watch out because he got one flag. <laughs> Okay, that was a great cut there. I'm pretty sure that was a good, a good shot. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Um, the problem you've got, right, is it's really difficult. That's a really difficult point in the Shi'ai to score the Ippon, right, because it's right after all of the sh Shinpan have had to make a decision one way or another, Ippon or not, against that Gyakudo, right? And there's still this, this, their sort of, their sort of thought process is still involved in that. And suddenly an Ippon's come out of nowhere. And it, I mean, it's not, it, it was a fantastic time to cut it. I can't see from the video how well it struck, but, um, I know, you know, um, from a timing point of view, this this uh, Shinpan can see it very, very clearly. Um, so probably it was on target. Could have done with a little bit better tenuity, probably. Just doesn't really have the... You know? That could have been in Bonn as well. Good, 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 good attempt at Kapela. Right, so, yeah, Gakudo, I, I see it's popular, <laughs> right? But this isn't how you want to make it, all right? When you make Gakudo, the best is not to move the left hand from the middle, but you can twist your hips this way, this way, but you want to keep your posture straight. Difficult, isn't it? And this is kind of match one each. I think for you, for, for playing this sort of match, I think kind of playing it a little bit cooler would probably be a little bit more. Uh, it's hard because a lot of pressure on, especially in a team match. Yeah. But using your age and experience as a way to kind of try and play the match as a whole a little bit calmer um, would actually be quite intimidating for your opponent. Easy to say, difficult to do. Let me have a look at that. Okay. The issue you got here is the, the Gyakudo again. The, the problem is, is there is a bit of a pattern of you sort of making this position, especially into the Zeriai. So it becomes a little bit open to this kind of Waza and the Shinpan become more and more ready to award it. Um, I don't know. It's probably you know. It's not a terrible Gyakudo to be fair. It's better than the previous one. From a technical point of view, it's not amazing, but from a, a in terms of the opportunity, it's quite good. Um, so there's that. Your um, men retaliation is also very good though. So you know, if it's me, if it's me, I, I'm probably lifting for the men rather than the Gyakudo. But um, I, you know, I, I respect the decision on the Gyakudo as well. I think that's it, it could have gone either way in that this particular situation. But he did set it up pretty well, in fairness. You know, you see how he kind of uses uses this sort of osai here to to get you to lift your arms, and then he makes the strike. So it's a well it's a well set up waza to be fair. Um, this Gyakudo, um, but in, in, in that respect, probably yeah, probably the Gyakudo is better than the men. Um, so you know, unfortunate. Unfortunate, but um, 
still a very, very good match, very well fought. And um, you know, uh, I think I think the best thing is try and try and keep your hands down if you can. All right, because you, you know you want to try and defend with the Shinai in front of you as much as possible. Um, the rules are getting stricter about how much you can do this as well. But you know. It just takes something like this and then someone to really smash that Gyakudo and they make a loud enough noise and they set it up like that lad did there, then yeah, they're gonna the flags are gonna go up for it. So, you know, um I think that's that's definitely worth uh, considering. Uh think about what I said as well about the shape of your men strikes. Um and yeah, um I think I think with those things in mind you'll you'll have no problem with Yondan. Uh, so thanks for sending it in. Right, next one. Okay, so here we are, the last one. This is another tournament. Um, so we've got a couple of videos to look at here. Um, the first one I think is split into two short videos, so there might be a bit of a jump there. Um, this is um, a, a Kumbo tournament. I think you said your second queue and in the first match your opponent is like sixth down or something, so quite a big skill gap. Um, let's have a look and see uh, see what we uh, see what we get. Okay, right. First one, just a short clip. Okay, so first off, now these aren't on YouTube, so don't have the same sort of controls that I normally do. But after hitting Kote like this, try not to stop on the spot and just lift your arms like this, okay? It's quite dangerous. You better just keep your hands down and then moving forward to close the distance. I want you to try, when you get to the ZDI, like this. Try not to just walk, try to retain the proper footwork uh, and then you'll be able to respond to your opponent appropriately. This is a dangerous point, he's gonna hit your men. Okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> you see, uh, so, you see here, right? I can see that your concentration is broken, okay? Um, I can see your concentration is broken here and the only thing you can do to respond to your opponent is go like this All right, that's why I said he's gonna hit your men. I haven't watched these videos before by the way <laughs> All right, and 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 sure as he came in and he hit your men and it was a pretty good man <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure the Shinpan gave you the benefit of the benefit of the doubt there based on the fact that it's there's there's a big skill gap Probably if that had happened in a sort of against a highest, you know, like a e more equal skilled um, match, uh, that probably would have already been awarded a zip bomb. All right. Well, then because because he then hit that, then obviously that sort of shook you. He was like, okay, and you kind of a little bit rumbled there. You see what I mean? But you see how he's able to keep the intensity and then make another strike immediately after. Yeah. Okay, uh, so that's that. All right, you got to keep your concentration towards your opponent all the time, all the time. All right, all right. Let's look at the second half of that same match. Okay, all right. Let's have a look. Okay. Okay. So here, you're sort of. Kind of just a bit random, a bit dangerous against a very skilled opponent like that. But I get it. What else can you do? Keep that concentration. That's it. That's it. Good. Now your stance a bit too wide and your left leg's a bit too bent. So you're going to really struggle to deal with whatever he comes at you with. Yeah. See? So what what what's happening here is... Yeah, I mean... Your your main strike is so big. See how much you're swinging the shinai back there. It's very very easy to read, and and easy for the opponent to make the nice, clean and obvious uh, taichi door. Okay, so that is what it is. That's that's that is what it is. Look, there's not a lot I can say to you in this one, because you know you put someone who's second. I think you said second Q or whatever the Korean equivalent is. Sorry, I don't know the the terminology. Is it cup or something like that? Um, Against someone who's sixth down, you know, what, what, what can I say to that? Um, you sent me some more, though, uh, from the same tournament. So let's, uh, let, let's, have, let's have a look at that. And uh, maybe, maybe we can get a bit more out of it before we wrap up. Okay, let's have a look then. So here you are, okay. I'm not sure about, I don't have any information about your opponents this time. Oh, 
Okay, okay that, was a, that was a nice chance, all right, but um, yeah, probably need to sharpen up the technical ability. Then you've got to be really careful. You see, afterwards you received the strike. Yeah? Yeah, like that. That was really dangerous, okay? And you're going to get one back if if you respond when you... This is not how you want to respond to your opponent, just lifting the arms up here. Step forward or step away, okay? Step forward. Okay. Good, that was good, that was good. I like that. Being able to respond uh, quickly to... Being able to respond to opponent's movements like that is very important. So again, as I say, you need to be careful because, you know, you've been lifting your hands up a lot. Luckily, this time you didn't, so you were able to uh, defend yourself. Try not to spend too much time like this with your hands over your head, okay? Even when you get to super you need to start sorting out your footwork so that you can control your uh, momentum and your body movement. You get caught in this position, bring the hands back down so that you're able to do any sort of technique that you might need to at the moment you need to do it, okay? This is very, very dangerous, okay? You mustn't break that conversation, uh, uh, concentration. It's a lot like what happened in the previous one. This, this is a good chance for him to hit the hit the hickey men there. Okay, good, good. Overall, you know, I, I think for the level that you're at, it's fine. But you have to be really careful after these hickey rubber, not to give them a the chance to hit you. All right, like this, yeah. Because this is, this is, this is a good chance for Hickey Doll, but you gave him the space to follow the men's strike. So you need to, um, you need to sort of improve. So you need to improve your, um, so you need to improve your ability of, of moving fast backwards and gaining the space without receiving the strikes, okay? It's, it's, um... Look, it's difficult. You know, you, you're at the beginning of your journey, really. Um, so keep it up, keep entering. Uh, and I think I think with more experience, you're gonna do a lot better. Try not to swing the shinai too big. Try not to break that concentration in the middle of the match, okay? Thank you very much for sending it in. Thank you everybody uh, who sent the videos. If you'd like to send a video, uh, the best way to do it is upload the video to YouTube, uh, set it to um, unlisted, don't set it to private, um, and send me the link by email mail at kendostar.com. Com. Thank you once again for uh, sending these in. I hope it's been helpful for those of you um, that sent them in and for everybody else watching. Don't forget to shop at Kendo Star. See you next time. Bye-bye.